Welcome to Three Things I've Learned with your host, Susan Dolce, where we share the stories that shift our souls. In the next hour, we will dive deep into the soul-shifting magic of stories. Stories of radical transformations, courageous breakthroughs, and life lessons. We're all students in this soul school called life. We don't need to do this alone. Why not share our notes? Three Things I've Learned starts now. Hey, welcome everybody to Three Things I've Learned, where we share the stories that shift our souls. I'm your host, Susan Dolce, and once again, I am so grateful for all of you that tune in to listen every other Tuesday here on Transformation Talk Radio. So today, I am joined by my friend, Chaplain Candy Worman. She's been on my show before, so I'm really excited to talk to her again. She's a board-certified Jewish and interreligious chaplain, a spiritual counselor, a transformational healing coach, and a writer who is almost, if not, if not finished, Hi, with yeah. her first book <laughs> entitled Moxie, Finding Courage, Strength, Determination, and Love Through Grief. She has a private coaching practice called Sacred Work with Candy, where she creates a divine sacred experience that allows individuals and families to share their heart, soul, sorrows, and joys, and facilitates meaningful end-of-life conversations, assisting them in the spiritual transformation of life and death. But another perhaps little-known fact about Chaplain Candy is that she is also a second-generation Holocaust survivor which is why she's the perfect person to discuss our topic today, which is how to identify and how to heal intergenerational and inherited family trauma, which is a real thing. It's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Candy. I am so happy to have you on the show again. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for having me again. And it's a, it's a big topic and I'm ready to jump into it, uh, even with all my angst. <laughs> Well, it is a big talk, but topic, and I really, as we were talking just before we started, um, and I'm sure it's going to, it's emotional. It's an emotional topic, but, you know, and we're talking about, in talking about trauma, I know um, that there's been the, uh, like epigenetics, I think they first started talking about in like 1990, but mm -hmm. in like the last five or six years, there's been a lot of new research uncovering the genetic effects of trauma from previous generations. and. Um, it's sort of like that skeleton in the closet that you didn't even know was in the closet, right? And unless you have like a really well-documented family history, you might not have any idea about the past traumas that are affecting you now or showing up in your life that mm -hmm. you aren't even aware of. So with that being said, let's just talk about trauma in general. So how would you define trauma? I would define trauma as the distressing, a response to the distressing and a distressing event. I also would say that it is, um, it is a place where it is buried, mm -hmm. you know, where it's, it's uh, insidious. I'm breaking it down. I could give you a definition that's all over the internet, but I I really like to break it down because it's insidious. It's that unsettled feeling. It's mm. often a shame base sort of uh, undercurrent of something happened, but we can't put our finger on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buried deep. Very deep. Mm -hmm. uh, um, one of the things, and we will, you know, I'll save this till we get to the part about um, intergenerational trauma. But there's a there's a thing called the cherry blossom experiment that was brought to my attention that um, talks about how it, it will sh it signifies how deep it can go that you're just not even aware mm -hmm. because it, it, it affects genetics. Mm -hmm. So you, absolutely, you absolutely does. And I often I will say and and. I came up with this, the only place I've ever heard this mentioned about spiritual injuries mm -hmm. was with deployed military personnel. And we come back and it's, it is the thing that I talk about in my practice 
is, is spiritual injuries occur from traumatic events and they are the thing that that robs our voice that deflates our joy and it it keeps us from shining our light so it's yeah. that affects the human spirit well so since you brought up spiritual trauma what like there are all sorts of different kinds of trauma absolutely and there's this uh, extensive list you know, that is on the internet, but it's, but there's so much more. There's, there's physical, I, you know, I guess what I would say first, there's acute, there's chronic trauma, there's complex trauma. Okay. There are physical traumas, there are sexual traumas, there are emotional, mental, um, mental abuse, controlling, there's um, even community community violence. You know, there's racism. There's discrimination, anti-Semitism, um, attacking. We're going to get into the second generation Holocaust survivor piece, but that attack on somebody's identity. You know, there's gender identity trauma. There's you know traumatic grief. So, and, and I want to add, which we can get into this more later, but there, there is covert, there's overt and there's covert trauma. Okay. Do you want to talk about that now? Cause sure. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. Overt. There are people who it's directly, it's, it's, it's directly committed, you know, somebody. So it's, so it's on purpose. Like somebody wants to hurt you. Um, more like than a, on like purpose. A, it's openly. Like a rape? Yes, like okay. a rape. Um, covert is that sticky, um, uh, under the cover, so to speak. So to, mm-hmm. it's the hidden, the secret, covert. Um, it's also the, um, the undercurrent of the emotional abuse. Mm-hmm. You know, things that are... These jabs, bullying can be, oh, I didn't do anything, but but yet it's done. Mm-hmm. Um, overt is, it, sexual abuse can be overt. But there also can be the sexual innuendos that are also covert. There can be financial abuse, financial trauma, you know, that... That could be overt or covert, something openly happening, um, maybe a memory, maybe somebody directly remembers it. But then there's those, the the part that I think is, it's all damaging, right? Mm -hmm. But the covert pieces, excuse me, are the pieces we, we go, what is going on? I can't figure it out. There's something underneath here. The covert messages, you know, you know, I work with grief and loss, Mm -hmm. all of those. And this is what makes it complex and complicated. Right. Because there are these messages underneath that you go, I heard this, but this is the message I got. So I heard, and I'll talk about this some more later, Gabor Mate. If you've ever heard of him, he's... I have not. Oh, my gosh. So he's... uh, I'll go into this more, but he talks... He's a physician Mm -hmm. that is... He's from um, Germany. He was born in Budapest. And um, he was a product of Germany, Nazi Germany. And I'll say a little more about that. But he talks about how... um, the the effect of trauma and the effect of um, addiction that comes from it. Mm-hmm. And he talks about how um, the, um, the, the, the parents that can't deal with, they, maybe they grew up with rage or anger in their family and they, they don't know how to deal with an angry child. Mm-hmm. So they say to the child, the little girl, 
a two-year-old who's having a temper tantrum, which is totally okay, right? Totally normal. Right, exactly. And says, good girls don't get angry. Mm -hmm. But because children can't convert that, right, to what they really mean, they, they get the message. It's not okay to be angry. It's not okay to have my emotions. And it's also good girls who are angry don't get love. Right. And that's, that is the crux of it right there, because that's what every, every child is seeking. I was, um, I'm in this program right now, um, a parent coaching program. And one of the things I just learned, um, well, sort of, sort of funny because I was listening to an audible book. It was sort of, it's a discourse by Bruce Lipton and he was talking about, and it came up, the same video came up in this program that I'm in, but it's how like in the first seven years of life, and even like pr- primarily like birth through 10 months, um, how we are just sort of, our brains are sort of, sort of in a theta state that we're almost in a hypnotic state. And all we're doing is trying to seek safety and security. And in the, in the, at the same time, we're observing. So all we're doing is like downloading these programs into our head of how we're supposed to act. Right. What right. you know, what is acceptable in our families? What we're supposed to do, mm-hmm. and, and when if you have parents that are already dysfunctional or already suffering from traumas that they don't even know or haven't made um, uh, connections with their past or healed themselves, then these things are getting programmed into these babies and little kids that. And they don't mean any harm. I mean, every everybody's every parent, I really believe from the bottom of my heart is really trying to do the best they can for their kids. But it's this, it's this subconscious drive that's that's in control. Right. And and it's it's transmitted of they do the best they can. Our parents have all done the best they can. And so I talk about this today, not to blame or shame anyone because we didn't, we as a people have not known how to deal with it. We do the very best we can. We do what we were taught often. And um, yeah, I'm going to share, I don't know if we're, if this is a good time to share this, the, if we're about to go on a break. We're, we're going to go, we're coming up on a break. So save the juicy stuff. <laughs> Um, but since we've got like a few minutes, let's just check in and let people know where they can find you. Sure. Um, you can find me on my website, sacred work with candy, sacred work with candy.com. Um, Can- candy with an I candy with an I. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm on YouTube, same name. I'm on Instagram, And I do have a Facebook page as well. And I I love the conversation. So this is, this is really near and dear to my heart. I'm sure we'll talk about it more later, but I've been a hospice chaplain for many, many years and been at the bedside. You can't bury this stuff. It will come up. Yeah. And hopefully that's what we're going to, we're going to get to at towards the end is how this all shows up at the end of life. Yeah. 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 And um, since you didn't plug it, I'm going to, (laughs) she also has a link on her, on her website. If you want to download the first chapter, like a little teaser, teaser, juicy bit of her book, Moxie, you can get that at, at her website. If you go over to her menu and click on that, you'll see you'll see uh, a tab to go and do that. Because you so graciously <laughs> did it for me. <laughs> I did. I, I helped. I helped. All and right. I know but, we're going to cut to break really yeah. soon, but but you know it's funny because this is all timely because I do talk about some of this stuff. Because as we, when somebody dies, we, and we're in that transformational time, we have to heal some of these patterns. We have to, in order to use what our parents, if that's the one we're grieving over, have left us. We have to carry the torch. We have to find a way to carry the torch and stand up inside ourselves. We owe it to the generations after us to heal. We do. Yeah, we do. All right, we're going to take a quick break 
I'm speaking with Chaplain Candy Worman. We're talking about intergenerational and inherited family traumas, but more importantly, how to heal those traumas. So we will be right back. It's time to shake out your money-making truth on Soul Wisdom Abundance with Jennifer Bloom, creating wealth from spiritual health on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show is more than your roadmap to success. It's your compass to abundance through joy and ease. Jennifer Bloom teaches you about the soul's relationship to money and wealth and how improving that relationship serves both you and the world. Learn more at JenniferBloom.com. Close your eyes and imagine what it would feel like to live a life driven by purpose and passion. Feels great, doesn't it? Tune in to Awareness to Action every first and third Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific with me, Joan Marlowe. I'm here to help you navigate your unique journey toward purpose while embracing your authenticity. Visit my website, peacefullyhealing.com, and don't miss Awareness to Action on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Stuck in a roundabout of dysfunction? Learn how to speak your truth to power with host Dr. Kathy Obear. Create real change with smart tools and smart strategies. No frills, no fluff, just life-changing conversations to help get you where you want to be. Extend your reach and become an agent for real change with Kathy Obear. For more information on Kathy and her work, please visit drkathyobear.com. That's drkathyobear.com. Mind to Heart with me, Craig Richardson, carves a pathway from your mind to your heart to activate that innate compass to overcome whatever life sends your way. As an intuitive life coach, I am ready to guide you to an amazing life. Tune in live every second and fourth Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about me, visit CraigERichardson.com. Juggling life's relentless demands can leave us unbalanced and restless. Do you feel stuck in the overwhelm? Diane McClay is a personal empowerment coach, author, and compassionate storyteller on a mission to boost you into balance and help you move forward with passion and purpose. Get unstuck with Diane on The Diane McClay Show every second and fourth Friday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about Diane, visit DianeMcClay.com. Welcome back, everybody. Today, I am joined by Chaplain Candy Worman, and uh, we're talking about trauma, specifically um, inherited trauma, intergenerational trauma, the stuff that epigenetics is talks about, um, and, and the and the the kinds of traumas that you know that um, are are even cellular based that we we might respond react to certain things in our environment or certain certain situations and we don't know why like you know like why might somebody be afraid of flying if they've never flown before or just i mean there's all sorts of mm-hmm. you know um situations we could talk about but i i i think that the science around this now is it's fascinating to me because they are finding out that it is on a, it does impact um, people on a cellular level, on a genetic level. And then that is passed down to kids and when they don't even know why they do it. <laughs> and um, I, uh, we were talking about this a little bit in break and I'm going to, I want to jump ahead to it because, um, because this is where we share the stories that shift our souls <laughs> is um, I remember you telling me a story about, um, some fear that, or some, something that, mm. some experience that flustered you. And it wasn't until, you know, you kind of, like you said, connected the dots and realized that, that being a second generation Holocaust survivor comes with stuff that you didn't even know <laughs> that you were getting. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So 
Before I jump into that, I'm going to just say that, and I was sharing with you this early on, and I think it's really important as we talk about trauma, that coming into this was scary. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm afraid to go on camera anymore, which is a miracle. And not to talk to me. (laughs) And not afraid because I'm afraid to talk to you, but because so much of trauma is about secrets Mm. And it's about the hidden and it's about the things that we want to go to our grave with that we want to bury. So I, I want to say this by saying um, it has come to a place. We mentioned my book. It has come for me to a place that the energy of holding back and hiding has become too painful. Mm. And so it may be, and if many of you may be facing this as well, but if there's something inside of you that feels really hard to share, um, that's sometimes a related piece about trauma. And Mm. for me, if I'm sharing about my family, I want to say, this is my story. You know, this is Mm -hmm. my experience. This is how I have become aware of things. And, um, and I believe today that it is time to stand up and, and own that. Um, With that said, and by the way, I will add to how do I take care of myself when I know I'm going to be faced with it? Mm-hmm. And I know that I was going to share it and things that were historical. I have on earrings from my aunt. I, I have that. on, thank you. I have <laughs> on a, a pendant that was from my grandmother's. My dad and my stepmom gave it to me. It was 1901 dime. Uh, dime. Um, I have on my Jewish star. I have on a, a little thing that my daughter gave me you know, a bracelet or a watch. I have my dad's watch sitting here and things from my mom because I know that it said, there's a quote, I don't remember where it was, but that the the voices of the prophets reverberate through time. Hmm. Hmm. The voices of the prophets reverberate through time. And I believe it's... Yeah of our parents, our ancestors, and those that who have gone before us. And there are messages. And when I was doing my graduate work, my first graduate work before seminary in spiritual psychology, I did a lot of work with Holocaust. And I did, and I got the message that as much as it was about persecution, alienation, and devastation, and destruction, that wasn't the final message, so to speak. We had to come forward. There was something about coming forward with strength and determination. And resiliency. And resiliency, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're going to, we'll have to remind me your, your actual question, but I, but I want to say that before I go to that, I mentioned Gabor Mate. Mm-hmm. So he is a physician. Um, he's from Budapest and he, um, he relates trauma with illness. And he, he talks about how our, our bodies are affected, our immune system, our, um, so he talks about his own experience and I'm going to share this piece because he's mm-hmm. really worth listening to. Um, I hope to get to see him virtually in April this month. He talked about how, when he was, um, in 45, 44, when he was born, he's probably 73, 74 now. And he talked about when he was born, Nazi German, Germans had not taken over Hungary but it was happening. And he, his, I guess his dad went away like my grandfather did where to help get out of the country. And he was, um, he was a baby. He was crying a lot. And his mom didn't know when it was going to actually happen to him. In what actually happened to her where she might be taken 
And he was crying and crying, and crying. And they, she called the doctor and the doctor, she said, my baby is just crying, crying, crying. And can you come see him? She, the doctor says, yes. And, but I want you to know all of our Jewish babies are crying <sighs> right now. And a little more in the story, she, the mom doesn't know when she might be taken gives him the baby to a perfectly a stranger and he's there apart for a month the baby doesn't know he doesn't know right. he feels abandoned mm -hmm. right and he feels like he's not wanted and he talks about how how does you know, the, the, the interviewer at the time says, how does this, she, he said, it still affects me today sometimes. Yeah. Right. And so she asked about that. And so he talks about when you have that kind of trauma, you, 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 you become a successful doctor, you know, or a successful chaplain or whatever, because you're seeking to be wanted. Mm. And you, you become a workaholic. I don't feel like I did, but he said he did that because every time someone calls, you want to say yes, because mm -hmm. you want to be wanted, right? So that's how those patterns develop. Well, and that also kind of goes to what I was saying about um, how I, again, this is new to me. I mean, I know that the first three years of life are, you know, critically important, but how, all of our um, safety and security patterns all start in the first 10 months. So here he is, this infant who's, like you said, all the babies are crying because they're picking up on their mother's nervous system and everybody's nervous and that's what they're picking up on and they don't feel safe. And so right. all the, and it just, and then to grow up, you no, know, he, I'm sure, you know, he knows the story but that imprinting is so deep, so deep. Right. And you don't know, you don't know how to, you don't know what it is. Right. Right. So, you know, there's something there's, he, he talks about, and I know this too, that empty hole place. And this is where addiction comes in. We try to fill the empty hole. Right. Yeah. And, you know, my dad, they escaped from Germany and, um, I know we're going to go on a break here. <laughs> That's okay. We've me. got a few more minutes. Um, but this, what you just described is it produces these, what we call intangible grief, mm. the lack of safety, the lack of trust in the world. Um, this came up for me, um, when I had a couple of car accidents at my job, my hospice job that I ended up resigning and I couldn't trust and I didn't know why. And I didn't know why. And it was came up around the system that it was supposed to be there to protect. But in my cells, exactly. Something told me I could not trust the system, whatever the laws were set up, whatever the, the protocol was there to take care of me wasn't going to. I had no idea this was going to pop up for me. Yeah, and and you didn't own that. I mean that that was again that was inherited, right? Like absolutely, absolutely. And I actually had to process it and travel it back and go, okay, what is this about? It's big. What is it? Is it family? Yeah. Is it related to my dad? Well, yeah. And then it hit, it was related to Holocaust. Yeah. It was about not trusting. And and again, that's why I said, like, if if you don't, if you don't know your family history, um, I think about this a lot too with adopted kids, because I have a friend who has two adopted kids. And some of the behaviors that come up that are totally trauma related from their from their, you know, youth, from mm -hmm. being in orphanages and stuff. And if you if you don't have that, where do you even start? It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's like a needle in a haystack. Yeah. Well, and you may not have it. And I've heard stories, but I've had to learn to trust my body mm. and my emotions to go, okay, I've heard the story, 
but what is true for me? Mm -hmm. What is true for me? Because our bodies know and our body doesn't lie. (laughs) Right. And I've been told many years, you know, don't get so emotional, you know, Mm -hmm. but, but the truth is the energy, I feel it in my body. And that's what we can talk about when we come back because the transition, yeah. it, co- it does come forward. Yes. Thank you for taking us into break. <laughs> so when we come back, we're also going to talk about trauma and how this shows up um, at towards the end of life. I'm talking with Chaplain Candy Worman. We're talking about trauma today. Whoo, big, big topic. More than we'll cover in our hour. But um, So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Are you feeling the complexity of life? Do you feel that urge to step into something greater? Tune in to Nailed It Radio. Find your simplicity within your complexity with me, life coach, Carrie Nail. Tune in each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com to discover what it means to use your full power to be the best version of yourself. Imagine stepping into the energy of saying yes to yourself and knowing you nailed it. For more information about me, visit CarrieNail.com. Tune into Three Things I've Learned with Susan Dolce every first and third Tuesday of the month at noon Pacific, 3 o'clock Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. Join Susan and her guests as they share the stories that shift our souls about radical transformations, courageous breakthroughs, and life lessons. Three Things I've Learned with Susan Dolce. For more information, go to TransformationTalkRadio.com or visit Susan's website at SusanDolce.com. Imagine you are a ball of steel, smooth, small, and cool to the touch. Your life will soften you with fire. You will take hits that shape you. You will be forged into a powerful, purposeful work of art. Tune in to Forging a Life with Coach Christine Clark. Join in Dr. Pat Basile in a three-part series, Truths in the Creation of Katana, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Christine Clark, a gifted, engaging speaker and trainer who has forged her life in the fires of self-employment, will take you on a journey to exploring the internal, mental, and emotional blocks that stand between us and a life of significance through an analogy of the process of crafting a traditional Japanese sword or katana. For more information about Christine, visit sunglowtransformation.com. I have had such a good time on Tales from the Merworld Radio. It has been an opportunity for me to expand myself so dramatically and become much braver in my voice to speak about the things that I'm passionate about that are a little bit out there. Your staff is amazing. Olivia is amazing. Jessica, everybody. Anytime I need anything, they show up right away. So thank you for having such an amazing team that is allowing me this platform to do what Spirit wants me to do. What we've been taught and told is not all there is. Life is all about energy, and the energy you feel is real. Tune into the Energy Paradigm each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com with Dr. Vic. The Energy Paradigm is an eye-opening, mind-shifting, transformative, and earth-shattering way to live, work, and do business that will enable you to unlock your magic every day. Visit TheEnergyParadigm.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. You're listening to Three Things I've Learned. I am Susan Dolce, and I am speaking with Chaplain Candy Worman today. And we have uh, spent the last 45-ish minutes talking about, oh, no, more like 30-ish minutes talking about um, trauma, uh, intergenerational trauma, inherited trauma, and just, you know, like the word you chose that you used in the first segment was insidious Mm-hmm. And that, you know, it, it's like, uh, it, it is sort of like uh, the, uh, the other word, uh, the other 
um, thing that I use in the word insidious with all the time is water because water will sneak into the cracks and rot things and <laughs> that you, that you don't even, you're not even aware of because it just goes to the lowest point. And it's kind of like that, you know, it kind of seeps into the crevices of, of your life and you're not even aware of how it's driving your decisions and your behaviors and your relationships and on and on and on. So, um, I loved your story about Gabber Mata. I'm sorry if I s- screwed that up. Gabor, um, Gabor Mate. Gabor, Gabor Mate. Okay. Fascinating. Fascinating mm-hmm. story. Um, as well as your own personal story. But it, one of the things that, um, and this is where you, uh, you and your work really now kind of come to the forefront is how does this, how does trauma show up uh, in the, at the end of life and how does it impact grief and grieving families and, and, um, and the ability for, for, I know this is a loaded question, um, Mm -hmm. but the ability for those that are dying to let go. Loaded. Yes. (laughs) Great. Um, Yeah, you know, in my practice now, Susan, I I deal a lot with I, I I say death and dying, grief and loss and trauma, because I've spent my life, at least the last thirty five years of my life, but I feel like most of it trying to connect the dots, and in my work at the bedside. At the end of life, there's a, mul- num- there's a multitude of things that happen. Number one, for the patient that if they have trauma, and many people do, by the time somebody gets to hospice and they're at the end of life, they don't have the majority of capabilities to deal with it to Mm -hmm. express it. So sometimes, often, it will come up in the way of heightened anxiety. Mm -hmm. There's a term we use in hospice called terminal agitation. That sounds horrible. (laughs) It's horrible. It's horrible. It is horrible. And um, it's, it's a lot of the things that people wrestle with at the end of life because they've not been dealt with. Yeah. I, you know what? You just hit the, like, I'm like, that's exactly what my father went through. I believe it. I believe it. And I think that that is what has prompted me to dive more deeply into this work to really make sure when I'm working with somebody on grief, which is, Often our grief is complicated by our childhood experiences. It goes all the way back. It's about the things that are unresolved. It's about the traumas. It's about the, the, the known and unknown traumas. Mm-hmm. And we do feel it in our body. Um, it's, it's being able to connect um, both for the patient and for the family, because if it's not resolved, if it's not brought to the forefront and say the patient feels guilty, that's going to make it difficult at the end of life. Okay. There are no words. And it's also the things that have been held that the family knows it's going to affect relationships. Mm -hmm. And I've said it and I'll say it again, we can't bury it. It will, it does come out. It's coming out all through our life. The effects of trauma are coming out. It'll come out as what we call sideways anger, Mm. which is sarcasm, which actually (laughs) at the root of that, the actual meaning of it means to tear flesh. Really? Yes. Wow. Because I just side note, 
um, in my family, like I, you know, they know I don't get sarcasm half the time because I always feel like it's people trying to be, or people um, saying what they really mean, but cloaking it in, in, in humor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I just, sometimes I just don't get it. And they'll say something like, mom, that was sarcasm. So um, yeah. Sheldon's known for that too. (laughs) Yeah. I can totally appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. I just, I'm like, let's, let's be literal. Let's tell the truth here. Yeah. So you asked me even, how does this show up? So um, I want to dive in a little bit in that too, um, because it's um, for me in my family, I had a, um, well, I want to just say this, that, that, that first, before I share this, that, that, that things can show up from a, a child's, a, a parent's divorce, my parents divorced when I was nine, almost 10. I've been working with that all my life. Um, The different effects. Um, If there's a family that has um, infidelity, um, that secret. Um, If a family has, there's addiction, Mm. um, that and the, the trying to keep that secret so there are multitude of ways, the whole piece around sexual abuse and the, the coercive, the coercive, no, the really covert, like this is about love and it's not about love and, you know, and if, and the threats that go with that. So mm-hmm. there's just a multitude. And by the way, the, the pieces of like sexual shame can come up around um, other person's behaviors. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, and so um, that's confusing too. Right. Yeah. So the confusing messages that happen along the way. Um, so you asked me, so the looking good family, let me just share about that while we're going here. Um, because I'm, because of the nature of the Holocaust, we're going to say it like that. The the rejection of an identity, an ethnicity, the blame on the Jews for all of life, what was happening. Mm -hmm. My dad never talked about it, okay? never talked about it later. There were some stories written, but, and then I've heard different things, but he never talked about it. So, but that doesn't mean that the energy wasn't transmitted. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine the fears that were, he attempted to bury, he did a great job. He was very successful. I'm, I'm very proud of him in the way of being the remarkable man that he was in, you know, in his work as a hospital administrator and in community, powerful. And at the same time, the pushing down, what I imagine is pushing down fears, those get transmitted. They get transmitted in energy, Mm -hmm. They get transmitted in, you know, anger. And I was afraid, you know, I was, I was afraid and I thought it was my fault. And what happens in families, I say we're, we were looking good families. There's no, no crime in looking good. That's <laughs> not what I mean. It's when you feel like you need to put forth an image that's different than the one you actually have, the truth of who you are, because you want to put forth an image so that you will be valued in fear that you won't be valued right? Who for who you are. And that's what I feel like is all has been transmitted. And that's that mm, the, to think about not being able to be authentic, to not being able to show up, you know, in, as who you really are. 
and expressing all the, you know, all of your God-given qualities or, you know, just to, to just be, be who you are because that's not acceptable or wasn't acceptable or, you know, was an atrocity. Um, it's, it's, it's just breaks my heart to really put it all together like that. You know, it's just, I mean, and I can see how that is going to be carried over from generation to generation to generation. Yeah. And so I'm a second generation Holocaust survivor, but there's also third and fourth and we know very little. We, we don't know how the effects are and I can pretty well, um, guarantee that if we don't work on our trauma, it is transmitted. But I can also guarantee that if we work on our trauma and if we own it, we can change the trajectory of our family experiences. We can heal the world. We can. And that's that's a perfect place to segue into a break because when we come back, we can talk about how do we begin to heal those? Where do we start? What do we do? What does it look like? I'm Susan Dolce. You're listening to Three Things I've Learned. Today I'm talking with, <clears throat> pardon me, Chaplain Candy. Mm-hmm. And we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Champion your life with me, Leanne Champion. First and third Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com. That new gym membership might help you get fit, but what about emotional fitness? Jump into the rushing waters of personal growth. Don't waste another minute feeling unfulfilled. Visit ChampionYourLife.com and let's do this together. Welcome to Soul Activation Podcast, a world-class broadcast of insight and inspiration with the renowned healer and coach, Suzanne Alexandria. In this series, she dives deep into the magical sea of you, to the place in you that's ready to activate. Tune in live every second and fourth Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Listen up. The wealth you receive is a result of your personal relationship with the soul of money, meaning your spiritual well-being affects your ability to create abundance. Jennifer Bloom works with people to mend the spiritual disconnects that block up the cash flow. How's your relationship with yourself? Are you in balance with the divine? I know these are big questions, but there are answers. Take Jennifer's free money relationship quiz to learn where you need to focus your energy and watch yourself grow into the abundance you deserve. Trust the divine. Learn to receive. You are worthy of all the wealth you seek. Visit jenniferbloom.com and click on the purple banner to take the free money relationship quiz. That's jenniferbloom, B-L-O-O-M-E.com. Tune into Hungry for Answers every first and third Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com with me, Robin Clare. I am a recovery coach, professional, and best-selling author, bringing you eye-opening conversations about addiction and groundbreaking tools for recovery. To learn about me and my offerings, visit Clarity.com. That's Claire, C-L-A-R-E, dash I-T-Y, dot com. Okay, we are back. We are talking today uh, about trauma. I'm speaking with Chaplain Candy Warman. And um, before break, we were talking about uh, looking good family. (laughs) But right before uh, before the break, I said, okay, so now we, we know trauma. We've talked about it a lot. We understand that it's insidious and that it kind of creeps into, you know, the crevices and the dark spots in our life and kind of, you know, makes a home there. 
And how do we, so how do we begin to heal traumas? If, I mean, for, for, first of all, we have to identify them. So that, how do I identify them? How do we heal them? And then lastly, because I want to make sure we get this in the final parts, because you did say, like you said, you're wearing, um, you know, all of these, all of these tokens, all of these memories from family to kind of be around you today as we talk about this. And how, how can we reach out to, you know, our beloved ones who have crossed over to help us in that, help us in the healing? Wow. All in 10 minutes. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Just hit the highlights. You just give okay. me the parts yeah, you want to talk about. You're hitting at the highlights. Um, <laughs> whew, how do we heal it? Let's, let's start there. Well, we start talking. Yeah, name it to tame it, right? Sort of. We, we got to start talking. So if you're feeling something weird in your body, if you're feeling something that feels confusing, you're trying to sort it out, talk to, if you have family members, talk to them. Work with me to, to kind of connect so that we can tune in to a truth within your body. As we said earlier, the body doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. Body does not lie. The emotion, if I'm shocked by something that happens or something makes me feel sick inside, there's something there for me. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden I walk into a room, I get a headache. That's an indication something is going on. So we need to start paying attention to what our body's doing. Which which I'm interrupting here really briefly, which I bet is really hard for a lot of people because most people aren't even in their bodies. Well, it's exactly. they're in their heads. Yeah, but I want to I want to say this a couple of a couple of quick things that really um, have hit me, you know, like recognizing um, when I my mom was um, she was afraid of being abandoned. She was afraid mm-hmm. that when I would leave home, I was, I was, um, mm, that, you know, I was abandoning her. So this was a theme that came up. And then when I studied further and did a uh, genogram when I was in grad school and I was asking my mom some questions and um, she ultimately came out with that her the story about her her mom being afraid that um, that when they moved to New Orleans that her dad uh, her husband was going to uh, abandon her was going to leave mm. she says why why and mom was eighteen and she says all of a sudden the story came out here my mom was eighteen but it, it came out that when her mom so my grandmother's mom was 30 and there were six kids her father walked out was a womanizer was you know abandoned well we didn't know we needed to talk about this stuff right this and I'm going oh my gosh that explained everything yeah did I judge my mom I'm sure I've judged my mom on other occasions but this was like wow this makes sense of why how this fear how the fear of abandonment gets transmitted. The other thing I want to share that I became aware of in this grief group um, was how when my parents divorced, I couldn't, you know, I only knew what I knew. There were pieces that weren't identified, stories I heard later, but I had to realize later that I held back my love because I didn't know my love was good enough. I was afraid I might be abandoned, even though I knew my dad didn't abandon me per se, that he left my mom, but he really left us. He left the family, you know? And, and so I was fearful of that. And I also didn't know that my love was enough. So these were, these are things that happened from trauma. Yeah. So how do we heal? How do, how do we, we heal? How do we continue to heal? 
So we have to recognize that we are multidimensional beings. We are not just physical. We are not just spiritual. We are connected. All right. We need to be connected. We need to honor all of ourselves. And we need to feel this stuff. Okay. We need to pay attention if we, if we get headaches or we get stomach aches or we get nausea. So we have to get connected to the body. Sometimes it's through meditation. Becoming educated on what trauma is, Mm -hmm. is huge. Because so often we want to go, it wasn't so bad. I survived. I survived. We want to minimize. Okay. We've minimized, we've been minimized often and we minimize ourselves okay so we have to feel it connect with it um connecting with our spirits and 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 knowing that these idiosyncrasies that we have you know there's something connected to that mm-hmm. you know we need to break the cycles yeah, we it, it, so it's <clears throat> we need to be curious with with self compassion mm-hmm. and self love and it's like yeah yeah and right. and yeah and and tr- and and try to come from a place of non judgment and yeah I mean it it's this stuff is you know again we're coming up at the top of the hour <clears throat> and we could as as always when Candy and I get on a show together we could <laughs> we could do three hours talking about what we want to talk about. But um, yes, I mean, it's thank you. Thank you for sharing your personal story. Thank you for being brave (laughs) and authentic and coming on here to talk about trauma and how it's shown up in your life and how we can, how we can, um, you know, try to heal ourselves and, you know, identify it and heal the trauma in our lives so that hopefully we don't pass it on to the next generation. Right. And if I can wrap up by saying this, the the breaking of the cycles is all about the 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 racism the 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 dehumanization the abuse cycles the um the anti-semitism the mm-hmm. all of it the disconnections that we feel and when we start paying attention we can build that connection we can heal we can heal ourselves we can heal our, heal our families and we can heal the world and so if you'd like to work with Candy, because she's great at all this healing stuff, <laughs> she's great at trauma and grief, and she is a she's a master and a wizard, and I adore her. Mm-hmm. Her website is Sacred Work with Candy. That's Candy with an I, sacredworkwithcandy.com. We all have a story to tell. We can live in the story, mm-hmm. or we can transform the story. It's your choice. But if you change your story, you can change our world. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Three Things I've Learned with Susan Dolce. Tune in every first and third Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com for more inspiring stories of radical transformations, courageous breakthroughs, and life lessons. For more information on Susan and the stories that shift our souls, visit her at SusanDolce.com. That's SusanDolce.com, D-O-L-C-I. We'll see you next time. The views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.